So then, after reviewing the prints and getting a game plan together, rather than take a larger piece of Sitka and cut this T-shaped piece that you see here, I decided to make uh, two individual pieces and epoxy them together. So uh, just pretty straightforward, you cut each individual piece uh, in the dimensions that are given on the print and then go ahead and epoxy them together and uh, this is basically what you should end up with. And I also did the same thing with the leading edge piece. The piece here on the bottom with the angle cuts, that was cut on the uh, table saw, just rough cut as you see here with the angles and then the, uh, the piece on top was cut as well and then they're epoxy together. Now this leading edge piece, the piece that's on the bottom in this picture, that will be finished sanded by hand to give it a more rounded contour so it doesn't have that flat on the bottom here. So that's how I got started. I just uh, cut some lengths of the, the various pieces um, and then epoxied them together to give me the overall shape and this is what I've got. Here you see the beginnings of my layout for the vertical stabilizer. The leading edge piece is being held by the large C-clamp and then the bottom of the vertical stabilizer uh, is underneath the two circular weights. Now the main body of the leading edge piece and the uh, bottom piece underneath the two weights those are the same thickness so I went ahead and laid both of those right on the uh, bench top and slipped the uh, the wax paper that you see there underneath them just so the epoxy doesn't stick to the bench top but since those two pieces are the same thickness they can both be flat on the tabletop when you epoxy them so you get your piece cut roughly to length and uh, get your angles cut and you can go ahead and epoxy these two pieces together as you see here. It's just that simple so far. This is a close-up shot of how I decided to do my hinges which is uh, quite a bit different than what uh, anybody else has done. I cut this slot with a uh, with a milling machine, my benchtop milling machine, and this slot is an eighth of an inch uh, wide, which is the smallest end mill that I could use uh, that would give me the the depth, the penetration that I need for the hinge. But this these slots, if you go this route, will need to be uh, put into the trailing edge piece of the vertical stabilizer prior to any kind of assembly so once you get your your trailing edge piece made either uh, you you route it out of a solid piece or you did what I did make it out of two pieces and epoxy them together you need to go ahead and figure out what length you want your piano hinge and then mill these uh, slots in the piece prior to assembly uh, prior to assembling this piece with the other pieces to make the uh, vertical stabilizer. Now these slits for me I decided to go with about two inches. I'm going to use like two inch uh, long or wide however you look at it piano hinge. So these slits are just a little bit over two inches wide and I'll, I'll get into uh, the idea behind them and, and how my thought process was with coming up with with these and how they work and how to make them but for now um, just a little heads up before before you get to any real assembly work these slits need to be cut out if you decide to use the hinges that uh, that I decided to go with okay so this picture here is the top of the vertical stabilizer if you haven't guessed that already and if memory serves correctly, which it probably doesn't, I believe this is a half inch thick piece and I believe it's probably about an inch, inch and an eighth wide. And I just um, uh, drew, drew out my curve the way that I wanted, to, wanted it to look so it would uh, blend from the leading edge back to the top of the trailing edge, a nice gentle curve. 
and um, traced it out, cut it on a band saw, and this is what I ended up with. Now, I'll, I've got some other shots coming up in some video of how this all looks when it's put together, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the individual pieces that I made to come up <coughs> to come up with my vertical stabilizer. So you have your leading edge piece is epoxied, your trailing edge piece is epoxied, your uh, bottom piece, and then this curve piece. Those are the main wood structures for the uh, for the vertical stabilizer. And uh, let me see if I can get some video here uh, to keep you awake. You're probably falling asleep by now with all the boredom and the still shots. So let me get on that, and uh, hopefully you'll have a little bit more to uh, to look at and take in. Alright, so here's where I'm at with my vertical stabilizer. Um, first off, what I want to make note of is the pieces that are milled. Uh, let's see if this will focus. Like this piece here, this uh, piece that's kind of T-shaped, rather than trying to cut that, what I did was I just took two pieces of Sitka cut to size and then epoxied them to each other to make this piece here. And I did the same thing for the leading edge. Let me come around here a little bit. Right here, this piece. Um, again, I just took two pieces, cut them to size, and then epoxied them together, and then went ahead and cut the, the, uh, the shape for the leading edge. So that's how I did that. Second thing that I did, which was a little bit of a modification, were the hinges. Rather than use the typical cast hinges, what I've elected to do is go ahead and use regular piano hinge and recess them right into the wood. That's what these slits here represent. And the hinge then will be cut to size and slip into here. And then it will be bolted through, these are just little guide holes, through here but using wood screws but they will not exit on the other side they'll come really close to protruding but they will not and then they'll they'll be uh, either flathead screws or they'll be counterboard into the wood and then they will be encapsulated with a piece of plywood over top both on this edge and on the bottom edge so the hinge gets slid into the slot and it will get drilled as I uh, drill these holes to size, the hinge itself will get drilled in place. And then uh, the screws will get screwed in, wood screws will get put into these holes through the hinge and screw into the wood on the back side, but not go all the way through. 
and then I'll lay in a piece of plywood here and a piece of plywood on the back to encapsulate those screws so they uh, they can't go anywhere. So that's how I did, or that's how I'm planning on doing my hinges. I've got one there and one up here at the tip. And obviously you can see that I did not build a jig. I'm just using my uh, countertop here. It's got these nice, perfect 90 degree corners. So I laid up everything that I needed to lay up here. And I use different spacers where needed. Here's a piece of quarter inch cap strip for the space here. And it carries on back. And then I've got another one there. And then for this curve piece here, I've got some popsicle sticks and I've got some weights because the popsicle sticks are a little bit wavy. So the weights just keep everything pushed together and flat. And then you can see here that I've got, I've got some cut up popsicle sticks to take up the space for the C-clamp. Here's some more. So everything is spaced accurately because the boards are sometimes um, a little bit different in thickness. Like this piece here, I believe this dimension is 5 8 so I cut my curved piece here to 5 8 But then uh, this piece here, I believe this dimension is half inch. And then when you come over here to this piece here, I think this dimension is 3 quarter, I believe. I'm not looking at the prints right off hand, but so everything has to be kind of shimmed and, and spaced appropriately, but I don't think a jig is required. This is how I decided to do mine. It seemed to be somewhat easy and I don't have to worry about building a separate jig. So, so far this is what I've got. When you do the hinges, you have to make sure that looking at the prints, you save room, so to speak, for the stringers that will run across here on both sides. They're really small. I think they're half inch by 3 16 They run across here. And of course on the other side there'll be some. So you want to make sure you don't put your hinges right where those strips are going to be attached. Just in case someday down the road you need to get to these screws or you need to replace the hinges you can do that without having to rip out your stringers. So you look at the prints real well and you can get the measurements that you need to, uh, to build this obviously and to uh, make note of where you should and should not locate your hinges if you choose to do this method here. So that's what I've got so far. As I continue on I will uh, continue to uh, get some footage either motion or still and hopefully some more hints. Alright here I am day two on the uh, vertical stabilizer. First thing you'll notice is that I did not remove it from uh, the the uh, C-clamps and whatnot. I left it dry overnight and I left everything clamped so I can go ahead and do the gussets and add the uh, these stringer pieces here. I did it all with it in place. Um, I just felt better doing it that way. I probably could have unclamped it and moved it and and done everything that I needed to do but I just elected to leave it in place. So all I did was cut these stringers to size as per the print and uh, space them accordingly as per the print and you can see here this is what I talked about a little bit yesterday spacing the hinges appropriately so that they'll clear the stringer so the stringer is actually quite a bit below the hinge which you'll see there uh, the weight is not really there to hold the strip down it's basically just there to, to keep it flat mostly on this end because what will happen is, let me go over to this one, these will end up sitting higher than this edge here. So on this particular one I wanted to make sure I had some kind of a clamping force because it lays, this piece here lays across this piece here. As it comes across here it kind of ties this to this. I'll just take it off and show you like that. So I wanted to keep make sure that these stayed nice and flush and that this made contact with both this piece and this piece. So I have some wood and some wax paper under here. And I just go ahead and put this little weight over top of the whole assembly just to kind of make sure that everything stays flat. So that's that. 
And then I did the same thing on this end here just to make sure that this end here didn't pop up higher than this piece. This is a nice flat seam and then again this is just to kind of hold everything together. Not so much for the epoxy but just to keep everything flat. And then I would put in my gussets and one thing that I want to make another note of, uh, I'll go up to this one. I have some still pictures of this as well, but oh man, this is blurry. Get that out of the way. Let me see if I can. Well, anyway, this piece here is three quarter inch thick, and this piece I believe is is five eighths or whatever it is. Anyway, this piece ended up being thicker. So what I ended up doing was I notched this area out with a chisel and then put the gusset down into this recessed area. So here it lays on top of the board and over here it lays inside of this cutout area that I did with a chisel. That's just how I decided to do it and of course I'll do it on the other side as well on the back side. But um, that's just me. So now I've got my gussets in place on this side and um, I've got the, the three stringers in place and I've got the, the bigger vertical support here. This, this will get gusseted down at the bottom here. Once and I'll, I'll put a gusset here. This piece is important with the gusset because one of the uh, metal L brackets gets bolted to this to attach the vertical fin to the fuselage. You get a metal bracket here and you get another one back here. And what I think I'll do, uh, just especially on this piece, I believe it's this one, yes. I think when I flip the whole assembly over to do the gussets on the other side, I think I'll actually put a, put a corner block in here uh, because this, this gets a, uh, a metal L bracket to attach it to the fuselage. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do anything like that here or here yet. I haven't decided, but I think I will do it in this corner. But that will all be in the video if I decide to go that route. So that's what I've got so far. This is going to sit and dry overnight, and I'll flip it over and continue on with it tomorrow. Having just watched those couple of video clips, there's a couple things I want to talk about real quick. First of all, obviously the vertical fin does not attach to the fuselage, it attaches to the horizontal stabilizer. So I don't know what I was on that day, but uh, that was a, a mess up on my part. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about again real quick is that uh, curve piece at the top, as you see in this picture, I elected, as I said, not to shape that until after the vertical fin was epoxied together and you may have noticed that in the previous two video clips that even though I had the fin together and I had all the components epoxied together the top piece um, was still in the rough like you see it here it had not been um, sanded shaped or contoured in any way I just find it a lot easier to do it after the fact because then you can get it to blend really nice from from the uh, top of the trailing edge down to the top of the leading edge. So I, I think to try to do that um, when it's a separate individual piece would be pretty difficult but if you wait until you have it in place and everything is epoxy then you can go back and sand on that all you want and get it to blend. Now this picture coming up here if it ever gets here, here it comes this one is the finished product. You can see that um, on the right of the picture where the trailing edge is, that is more flat and square and then it starts to round and curve and by the time it gets to the left of the picture where the leading edge is, it's nice and round and uh, it blends right into the, uh, the same profile as the leading edge. And there's another picture on its way here that uh, just gives you a little bit different angle. You can see on the right it's square and flat and on the left it's, it's kinda curved and round. So that's how I did it. It worked for me and I, I think it looks good enough. 
Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about are the gussets. You see the gusset on the left of this picture. That is the gusset that I had hogged out um, a little bit of the uh, curve material so that that gusset would sit flat inside of it here. There is a uh, before picture and uh, then obviously the gusset itself sits down inside that cutout. The reason I did this is because had I laid the gusset on top of the curve piece without hogging it out, when you wrap it with the fabric, you would see that gusset under the fabric. Now the other gussets, they actually sit below uh, the edges of the other wood pieces, so you won't see them once the fabric's on. But um, without cutting this, this notch out, that gusset would have sat on top of both pieces of wood and when covered with the fabric you would you would be able to see that gusset so this is just how I decided to do it in that particular location to kind of keep that vertical stabilizer nice and smooth and then uh, this next picture again I, I believe I talked about this in a couple of my other videos um, since my uh, leading and trailing edge pieces were made up of two individual pieces of epoxy together sometimes you can't get the epoxy cleaned from the corners and what I like to do with any attaching pieces like the ends of these stringers is just to bevel that bottom edge so that it will clear the epoxy and the wood itself will butt up against the other wood pieces so without that relief there the uh, the wood stringer may butt up against the epoxy and not uh, make its way all the way over to the wood so I just clean out that that bottom edge a little bit as you see in the picture uh, just to get a better fit and then finally uh, these last couple of pictures are the finished product or the almost finished product this picture here is uh, just about done the last thing that I needed to do that I felt was necessary is to put these spacer blocks that you see here between the stringers. When you put the fabric on and you shrink it, these stringers will tend to flatten out and uh, the spacer blocks between them just help hold a little bit more of a curved shape so that the vertical stabilizer has more of a uh, airfoil shape and these blocks are nothing more than just supports to keep um, the stringers from flattening out when you, when you shrink the fabric and then this picture here is the finished product this is with the uh, the curved top is sanded and contoured the, the gussets are in place the spacer blocks are on the stringers and uh, except for some minor sanding I believe that uh, this vertical stabilizer is ready for varnish I believe and then I've got one more here coming up and uh, these are my little helpers and uh, I drag them out there from time to time just to hold stuff so I can take some pictures and get them a little bit more involved so that I believe is that for the vertical stabilizer coming up next I think we'll get into the horizontal stabilizer stand by Hey everybody, just wanted to say real quick again, thanks for checking out my YouTube videos and uh, just a couple of real quick tidbits before you leave. If you'd be so kind as to check out my GoFundMe page, the link is down in the description of these videos. For those of you who uh, find it in your heart to uh, donate for this new cause of mine, I've got another project going on and uh, there's some really cool things I'd like to do with this aircraft um, and again that's all explained in my GoFundMe but um, if you find move en moved enough to go do that and donate um, I've got this, this horizontal stabilizer skin and uh, donors will get their name put on this skin and ultimately when this gets filled and uh, the aircraft gets finished this is going to be hung up on the wall of honor in my hangar just a little uh, a little bit of recognition for those donors who helped make the project a reality. Another thing too is I'm sure you've noticed that even this video that I'm making right now is of the same or worse quality than the video that you just watched and that's because believe it or not this camera is the exact same camera that I filmed the original hint videos with. 
So uh, I just wanted to point that out. I'm not really sure why, but uh, I know the video quality lacks, but hopefully the information within is, uh, is worth something. And the other thing that I want to mention real quick is, again, these are little snippets from my Hint video DVDs. So a lot of these individual clips just kind of come to an abrupt end. Um, and that's just the way it is when I'm, I'm trying to rip these DVDs apart and, and re-edit them into small little segments. And they, they just kind of end weird at, at times. But that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And again, thanks. And I hope you'll come back, check out my channel, and uh, see if there are any new videos and updates. All right. I'll talk to you then. See you.